you're looking at a Toyota Camry engine that needed a complete rebuild, not from lack of maintenance, but because the owner trusted a $12 bottle of oil additive. Here's something most mechanics won't admit. The oil additive industry is filled with products that range from useless to catastrophically harmful. I spent three decades tearing down engines, and I've seen patterns you need to know about. Today, I'm revealing 11 additives that have documented failure patterns. Some even faced class action lawsuits, and the five products that actually passed my real-world testing. By the end, you'll know exactly what to avoid and what might actually help your engine. But first, quick question. Have you ever used an oil additive? Drop a comment. I read every single one, and your experience might help someone else avoid a costly mistake. Before we dive into specific products, you need to understand something critical. Modern engine oil is already an incredibly sophisticated blend. Your typical 5W30 contains 15 to 25% additives by volume, detergents, dispersants, anti-wear agents, viscosity modifiers, and anti-foaming compounds. These formulations take years and millions of dollars to develop. They're tested at temperatures from negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, balanced for specific engine designs, and certified by API, ILSAC, or ACEA standards. So when you pour in an aftermarket additive, you're not upgrading your oil. You're disrupting a carefully engineered formula. Sometimes that disruption is minor. Sometimes it's catastrophic. The products I'm about to show you, they tilt that balance in the wrong direction. Let's start with the worst offenders. Number 11, PTFE or Teflon-based additives. The most famous is Slick 50, though several brands use this approach. Here's the fundamental problem. PTFE doesn't dissolve in oil, it suspends. Think of it like trying to mix sand and water. Eventually, gravity wins. I've documented this in my own shop. After just 3,000 miles with a PTFE additive, oil filters show white residue buildup. The engine's oil passages? Even worse. This lifter came from a Chevy with 50,000 miles. The owner religiously used PTFE additives, thinking they were helping. Notice the scoring? That's from oil starvation, the very thing the additive claimed to prevent. Here's the smoking gun. Even DuPont, the company that invented Teflon, issued statements in the 1990s recommending against using PTFE in engine oil. When the manufacturer says don't do this, maybe listen. Modern engines with variable valve timing, turbochargers, and direct injection have oil passages as small as two millimeters. They cannot tolerate suspended solids. Number 10, chlorinated paraffins. Chlorinated paraffins, these show up in extreme pressure or heavy load additives. The chemistry here is disturbing. Under normal engine operating temperatures, around 220 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, chlorinated paraffins break down into hydrochloric acid. Yes, acid in your engine, flowing through bearings, coating cylinder walls, attacking every metal surface. This camshaft tells the story. See these pitted areas? That's not mechanical wear, that's chemical corrosion. The owner used a chlorinated paraffin additive for just 5,000 miles in a Ford 5.4 liter V8. Every major automaker specifically prohibits chlorinated compounds in their approved oil specifications. Ford, GM, Toyota, Honda, check any owner's manual, they're all consistent on this. The environmental impact is equally bad. These compounds are persistent organic pollutants restricted in many countries. If it's toxic to the environment, what's it doing inside your engine? If you're finding this helpful, hit that subscribe button. I post detailed engine teardowns and real-world testing every week, and it's completely free. Number 9. Excessive Zinc ZDDP Boosters in Modern Vehicles This one's tricky because zinc isn't inherently bad, it's about context. ZDDP, or zinc dialkyl diethylphosphate, was the gold standard anti-wear additive for decades. If you're running a flat tap at cam in a 1960s engine, you absolutely need it. But modern engines, completely different story. Here's what happens. Excess zinc burns off during combustion, travels through the exhaust, and coats your oxygen sensors and catalytic converter surfaces. This creates a barrier that prevents the catalyst from working. I documented this on a 2016 Ram 1500. The owner added two bottles of high zinc additive, thinking more protection is better. Within 1,800 miles, check engine light, poor fuel economy, and a completely poisoned catalyst. The replacement cost, $1,400. The additive cost, $24. That's not protection, that's expensive ignorance. 
Modern oils already contain perfectly balanced zinc levels, typically 600 to 800 ppm for gasoline engines. Adding more doesn't increase protection in the engine, it just destroys emissions equipment. Classic cars use high zinc oil designed for them. Modern cars trust the oil formulation. It's that simple. Number eight, solvent-based engine flushes. Solvent-based engine flush additives. These promise to clean decades of sludge in 15 minutes. Sounds great, right? The problem is chemistry. Most flushes contain aggressive solvents, kerosene, naphtha, or similar petroleum distillates. They do dissolve deposits, but they also destroy your oil's viscosity. Watch this demonstration. Fresh 5W30 on the left, same oil with flush additive on the right. See how watery it becomes? That's your bearing protection disappearing. This rod bearing came from a Honda Accord. The owner used an engine flush, then drove 30 miles before changing the oil. The thinned oil couldn't maintain proper film strength under load. Here's the cruel irony. The instructions typically say, add flush, idle for 15 minutes, then change the oil. But people drive with it. Even idling for 15 minutes is risky in a high mileage engine with deposits holding things together. I've seen flushes dislodge large chunks of sludge that then block oil pickup screens. The engine was running fine with the sludge, the flush attempt killed it. If your engine needs cleaning, use frequent oil changes with quality detergent oil. Slow and steady wins this race. Number seven, graphite-based oil additives. Marketing claims sound scientific, ultra low friction molecular coating. Reality, black sludge fest Graphite is a solid lubricant effective in locks and hinges, but in motor oil, it has the same problem as PTFE. It doesn't stay suspended. This oil pan came from a Ford 308 V8. The owner ran a graphite additive for just 8,000 miles. Look at this buildup. It's like tar coating every surface, but the real damage is internal. These oil galleries were half blocked with graphite paste. Lifters weren't getting adequate flow, creating the exact ticking noise the owner was trying to eliminate. Modern engines have oil passages as small as 1.5 to 3 millimeters, especially in variable valve timing and turbo feeds. Suspended solids are the enemy of these tight tolerances. Plus, graphite holds heat rather than dissipating it. In a 230 degree F oil environment, you want heat transfer, not insulation. Graphite works great for door hinges. Keep it out of your crankcase. Number six, compression restore snake oil so-called compression restorers. If a product claims to fix mechanical wear from a bottle, run away. These products promise to seal worn piston rings, stop oil burning, and restore lost power. The ingredients list? Usually just ultra-thick oil with soft metal particles or seal conditioners. Here's what actually happens. The thick formula temporarily fills gaps between worn rings and cylinder walls. Compression might rise slightly for a few hundred miles, giving false hope. Then reality hits. This Dodge Hemi came in with mysterious black deposits coating the valve train. The owner had been using an unnamed oil conditioner for 10,000 miles. We never figured out what it was made of, but we know it caused problems. Legitimate additives have full ingredient disclosure or safety data sheets, API or ILSAC certification markings, published laboratory testing results, OEM approvals or endorsements, and clear manufacturer contact information. If a product hides behind proprietary formulas, that's a red flag the size of Texas. Number four, excessive molybdenum disulfide, or MSO2. This one's nuanced. Moly isn't bad, but dosage matters enormously. Molybdenum disulfide is actually an effective anti-wear additive when properly formulated. Many quality oils contain it at 50 to 100 ppm. The problems start when people add supplemental moly boosters on top of already treated oil. MSO2 is a fine powder. In professional formulations, it's milled to microscopic size and suspended with dispersants. In cheap additives, it settles quickly. This filter came from a BMW 335, after the owner added two bottles of budget moly additive. See the black paste? That's molybdenum disulfide that settled out and accumulated. The result? Dramatically reduced oil pressure and accelerated wear, the opposite of the intended effect. If you want molybdenum disulfide protection, buy oil that already contains it, like liquid moly or valvoline with moly. Don't add separate moly boosters unless you're working with a specialty application and no exact dosing. It's like salt in cooking. A little enhances everything. Too much ruins the meal. Except with engines, ruining the meal costs thousands. Number three, magnetic oil additives. 
this is where the oil additive industry enters pure fiction. Some products claim their formula has magnetic properties that make oil clean better to metal surfaces. Let's be crystal clear, this violates basic physics. Motor oil is not magnetic. Engine oil is primarily hydrocarbon molecules. They don't have magnetic properties. You can't make oil magnetic any more than you can make water magnetic. Some marketing goes even further, claiming magnetic seals align oil molecules for maximum protection. That's not science, that's science fiction. When you analyze these products, they're usually just thick oil with metal flakes suspended in them. Those flakes aren't helping, they're clogging filters and scratching bearings. No SAE papers, no engineering journals, no OEM acknowledgement. Just slick marketing preying on people who don't know better. Have you seen wild claims like this? Drop a comment with the craziest oil additive marketing you've encountered. Let's expose this nonsense together. Number two, stop leak additives. Engine oil stop leak additives. These might stop a drip today, but you're trading a $50 problem for a $3,000 disaster. Stop leak products work by softening and swelling rubber seals using aggressive chemical agents. Your rear main seal is weeping? Pour this in and it'll swell up and stop leaking. Temporarily. The problem, those chemicals don't just stop at swelling, they continue breaking down rubber compounds. After a few thousand miles, seals become brittle, crack, or turn mushy. This rear main seal came from a Chevy Silverado, started with a minor leak, maybe five drops overnight. Owner used stop leak. Three months later, the seal completely disintegrated, dumping oil everywhere. But here's what really concerns me. That stop leak fluid doesn't stay in the seal. It circulates through your entire oil system. I've documented it clogging VVT solenoids, blocking lifter oil passages, and gumming up PCV systems. The quick fix becomes a systemic problem. If your engine is leaking, identify the source and replace the seal properly. Yes, it's more expensive up front, but it's dramatically cheaper than the engine damage stop leak causes. Using stop leak is like putting expanding foam in a cracked pipe. Sure, the leak stops, but now you've got foam breaking off inside your plumbing, causing clogs throughout the system. Fix problems correctly, not cheaply. Number one, fake nano metal suspension additives. This is the most insidious because the marketing sounds so sophisticated. These products claim to use microscopic metal nanoparticles that bond to engine surfaces, creating an ultra slick protective layer at the molecular level. Sounds amazing, except most of them are complete frauds. Real nanotech requires electron microscopes, clean room facilities, and millions in research funding. You don't get that in a 1999 bottle from an unverified Amazon seller. This oil filter came from a Mazda CX-5 turbocharged engine. The owner used a budget nano metal additive. Two weeks later, turbo failure and metallic sludge clogging the filter. Lab analysis showed it was just metallic flakes in suspension. No actual nanotechnology whatsoever. Now, there is one legitimate nano additive I'll discuss in a moment. It has NASA funding and published research. But the dozens of knockoffs flooding the market? Pure garbage. Red flags for fake nanotech include no published scientific studies, no API or SAE certification, vague claims about molecular bonding, no transparency about particle size or composition, and being sold primarily through unverified online retailers. If it sounds like magic, it probably belongs in a movie, not your engine. Okay, we've covered the disasters. Now let's talk about what actually works. I'm about to share five products that I've personally tested, torn down engines after using, and verified through used oil analysis. These have legitimate science, proper certifications, and most importantly, real-world results that don't end in catastrophe. But before we continue, if you're getting value from this, smash that like button and subscribe. These detailed investigations take weeks of research and testing. Your support makes it possible. Let's dive into what actually earns a place in your garage. Approved number five, Liquimoly MS2 Anti-Friction. This is German engineering done right. Unlike the clumpy moly disasters we discussed earlier, Liquimoly uses ultra-fine molybdenum disulfide that stays suspended in oil and bonds to metal surfaces without settling. I've run this in multiple test vehicles with before and after oil analysis. The results consistently show reduced wear metals, iron, chromium, and aluminum all decreased. I've personally used this in my own high mileage Silverado. Smoother cold starts, quieter valve train, and oil temperatures dropped about five to eight degrees under sustained load. It's also OEM approved in European markets and has decades of documented performance. No wild claims, no mystery ingredients, just solid anti-wear chemistry. This is ideal for high mileage engines, older vehicles, and anyone wanting extra wear protection during extended drain intervals. Approved number four, Arcoil R9100. 
This is for the diesel guys, and especially if you run a power stroke, this stuff solves real problems. Arcwale 9100 is specifically formulated to address stiction, that sticky, sluggish behavior in hydraulic electronic unit injectors common in 6.0 and 7.3 liter power strokes. I documented this on a 2005 F350 with 180,000 miles. Before Arcwell 9100, cold starts were rough with visible smoke and rough idle for 30 to 45 seconds. One week after adding Arcwell 9100, cold starts were dramatically smoother. It works by cleaning varnish deposits and reducing friction in injector components. This isn't magic, it's targeted chemistry for a specific problem. Fleet maintenance operations use this regularly, and it has consistent positive reviews from actual diesel mechanics, not just marketing testimonials. This is ideal for power stroke diesels with stiction, high mileage diesels, and gasoline engines with sticky lifters or VVT issues. Approved number three, Tribotex. This is the only nano additive I'll endorse because it has genuine science behind it. Unlike the fake nanotech garbage we exposed earlier, Tribotex was developed with funding from NASA and the Department of Energy. Real research, real particle engineering. It uses engineered synthetic diamond nanoparticles that bond to metal surfaces under heat and pressure, actually filling microscopic surface imperfections. I tested this in a high mileage Subaru with lifter tick. After 1500 miles, the lifter tick reduced noticeably. Oil analysis showed improved wear numbers. Not overnight magic, but measurable improvement. It's pricey, around $90 to $120 for a treatment, but it's backed by legitimate peer-reviewed research and thousands of documented results. This is ideal for engines showing early wear signs, high-value vehicles you're keeping long-term, and applications where you want maximum protection. Approved number two, BGMOA, or motor oil additive. If professional shops trust it, there's usually a good reason. BGMOA isn't flashy, but it's incredibly effective at what it does, preserving oil integrity unto extreme stress. I've used this in turbocharged vehicles that run hot and in high mileage engines running extended drain intervals. The oil stays cleaner, longer, and burnoff is noticeably reduced. It's fully API certified for modern engines, no ZDDP overload, no foaming issues, no compatibility problems with catalytic converters. This is ideal for turbocharged engines, vehicles with extended drain intervals, high heat applications, and maintaining oil quality in severe service. Approved number one, Lucas Heavy Duty Oil Stabilizer. Controversial, but when used correctly, it delivers. Lucas is a viscosity improver. It thickens your oil. That's not always good, but in the right application, it's exactly what's needed. For high mileage engines with worn bearings or loose tolerances, Lucas can boost oil pressure and reduce mechanical noise. I documented a 12 PSI increase in hot idle pressure on a 220,000 mile Suburban. The key is using it intelligently. Adding one quart to a worn high mileage engine, excellent. Dumping half your crankcase full in a new tight tolerance engine, disaster. Use it in high mileage engines over 150,000 miles, engines with worn bearings or low oil pressure, and heavy load applications. Don't use it in new engines, tight tolerant sports cars, or in amounts exceeding 20% of your oil capacity. I've seen it quiet noisy valve trains, extend life in work trucks, and help old engines survive until proper repairs are affordable. Used intelligently, Lucas is a solid tool. Just don't expect miracles, and don't use it where it doesn't belong. So there you have it, 11 oil additives that can destroy your engine, and 5 that actually pass real-world testing. The bottom line is modern engine oil is already sophisticated. Most engines don't need additives if you're using quality oil and changing it on schedule. The best engine protection comes from quality oil that meets OEM specifications, regular changes, and proper maintenance. Everything else is secondary. But if you're running an older engine, addressing specific issues like stiction or wear or operating under severe conditions, the right additive, used correctly, can help. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. I post detailed mechanical investigations, real testing, and no BS automotive advice every week. I want to hear from you. What oil additives have you used? Good experiences or horror stories? Drop a comment below. Your real-world experience helps others avoid expensive mistakes. If this video helped you avoid a costly mistake or understand additives better, share it with other car owners. Knowledge prevents expensive repairs.